welcome age of vintage society. Believe it or not, America's fascination with celebrity culture was thriving well before these days. They weren't always the saints that we make them out to be. Pulling little-known gems from the archives of film history, we reveal some eyebrow-raising details about why Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy kept their affair a secret for 27 years. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. How do you sum up a love affair kept secret for three decades? Catherine Hepburn's 27-year love affair with Spencer Tracy. Hollywood Affair of the Heart Of all the Hollywood love stories, Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn's is the most complicated. The Guess Who's Coming to Dinner co-stars spent more than two decades hiding their status from the public. I loved Spencer Tracy, Hepburn wrote in her autobiography. I would have done anything for him. A love relationship as complicated as it was devoted, the bond between screen greats Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy stretched across three decades and nine films. But their off-screen union would remain publicly unacknowledged throughout Tracy's life, as the couple maintained separate residences and never wed. It is one of the most famous and forbidden Hollywood relationships. Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy's almost 30-year affair has sparked much controversy over the years, so it's no surprise that there is now talk now of a screenplay in the running based on their roller coaster illicit romance. Catherine was a confident, successful, ferocious actress who prided herself in putting men in their places by accentuating her intimidating height with high heels to tower over the opposite sex in order to get what she wanted. In 1941, after nine years of being a highly respected and sought-after Hollywood actress, well known for her spirited character and strong female presence, Kate finally met her match when she began filming Woman of the Year with legendary actor and heartthrob Spencer Tracy. Their mutual professionalism, stubbornness and independence sparked an immediate chemistry which not only worked exquisitely on screen but off screen too. When Tracy and Hepburn met in 1942, the two actors were in very different places in their lives. Their first meeting was not exactly what you would expect. Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn didn't even like each other when they first met. Instead of swelling violins and a cherub cupid shooting Tracy with an arrow, he was fairly unimpressed. For Hepburn, it was quite the opposite. In her autobiography, she explained that she knew right away she found him irresistible. Introduced while filming Woman of the Year, a then 34-year-old Hepburn remarked to her leading man, I fear I may be too tall for you, Mr. Tracy. Someone else on set assured the actress, 41-year-old Tracy, would cut her down to size. A divorcee with a liberal background and no-nonsense attitude, Hepburn didn't much impress the more conservative and religious Tracy when they first met. But as soon as they got in front of a camera, their chemistry was palpable. Their witty banter and lingering looks were Hollywood gold, and the pair would go on to star in eight more films together, much to the delight of studio executives and fans. On screen, Spencer and I are the perfect American couple, Hepburn once said. It was a different story off screen. Spencer had married in 1923 to actress Louise Treadwell and had two children. During his marriage, he struggled to stay faithful, but being a devout Catholic and blaming himself for his son's deafness, he would not divorce his wife. Instead, he removed himself from the family home in 1933, and the couple openly told the media about their separation. 
Eight years later, when Spencer and Kate began their first ever on-screen romance, it became clear to not just them, but the rest of the cast and crew alike, that the attraction between the two was unstoppable. The pair were drawn to one another, but Tracy was already married, and his Catholic upbringing meant divorce was never an option. Hepburn, who had already been married once herself, didn't seem to mind and never pushed for Tracy to leave his wife for her, content to take second place in Tracy's life. Hepburn later wrote of Tracy in her autobiography, Me, Stories of My Life, it was a unique feeling I had for him. I would have done anything for him. They began an affair that would carry on for almost 30 years, hidden from the press and public, by careful planning and studio interference. Dubbed one of the worst kept secrets in Hollywood history, the couple never publicly acknowledged their romance and went to great lengths to keep it hidden. Tracy quietly separated from his wife, then reconciled, but spent decades living apart from her, both to protect her from his affair and to keep it hidden from the public. But the rest of Hollywood, and certainly anyone who ever worked with Hepburn or Tracy, knew what was really going on. Everybody left them alone in their little private world. Lauren Bacall, who along with her husband Humphrey Bogart, was close with both Hepburn and Tracy, once wrote that her fellow actress was blindingly in love with Tracy. Having lived a Hollywood romance of her own, albeit a very different one, Bacall recognised how deeply Hepburn had fallen for Tracy and how deeply she would remain in love with him until his death. Meanwhile, Hollywood icon Gene Kelly recalled, at lunchtime they'd just meet and sit on a bench on the lot, they'd hold hands and talk, and everybody left them alone in their little private world. Catherine Hepburn was one of the most independent, pioneering and outspoken women to ever grace the big screen. She was tough and stubborn, rarely willing to bend much for anyone. If you obey all the rules, you miss all the fun. Catherine Hepburn certainly lived up to her famous quote. She broke rules, she had fun, she set her own agenda. Their relationship was complicated. She just never could walk away from him. Intimate as it seemed from the outside, theirs was not a healthy relationship, since Tracy's was a troubled soul. When Spencer's son was born deaf, he interpreted that as punishment for his sins of straying away from his family. He struggled with depression and alcoholism in his life, living out of hotels for many years at a time, often unable to cope with life. Let's stop for a minute and think about it. How could a woman so strong and independent constantly throw herself at such a scoundrel? Hepburn herself described him as tortured, yet dedicated herself to him anyway. Many of her friends noticed her uncharacteristic behaviour around Tracy. Behind closed doors, a heavily drunk Tracy bellowed at his devoted mistress until he passed out, and even once smacked his hand across her face. Hepburn, however, devoted herself to make his life more peaceful. From people who saw them together, her usual strong-willed and self-involved demeanour changed into an almost submission whenever she was around Tracy, who was also heavily dependent on her. She mothered, obeyed and always put his demands first. I wanted him to be happy, safe, comfortable. I liked to wait on him, listen to him, feed him, work for him. I tried not to disturb him. I was happy to do this. In the 60s, when Tracy's health significantly deteriorated, Hepburn took a five-year hiatus in her career to take care of him. She moved into his house for this period, stayed by his side when he passed away on June 10th, 1967. <laughs> Mindful of his family, Hepburn did not attend Tracy's funeral, though she did call his wife to see whether a peace between them could be reached, to which Louise responded, I thought you were a rumour. It was not until Louise's death in 1983 
that Hepburn began to break her public silence on her feelings for Tracy. At this time she had befriended his daughter, Susie. In response to the question of why she stayed with Tracy for so long when their relationship could never become official, she replied, I honestly don't know. I can only say that I could never have left him. Briefly after that, Hepburn added that she did not know exactly the nature of Tracy's feelings toward her, but that they just passed 27 years together in what was to me absolute bliss. According to a friend who knew them well, Tracy died at Hepburn's home after a last excruciatingly painful heart attack. As the attendants loaded Tracy into the ambulance, Hepburn sat beside him and said, Let go, Spencer. It's over. There have been Hollywood romances conducted in public for as long as they lasted, but not, I think, has there been anything to equal the passion and the perseverance, and indeed the dignity, of Catherine Hepburn's love for Spencer Tracy. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. Have you ever wondered how hard it could have been to keep this secret for almost three decades?